so I'm I'm here with Martin uh, from Ark. Well, Martin, I mean, tell me who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, I'm the Secretary General of the Alliance of Religions and Conservation. We're a, a sort of sister, younger sister organisation of WWF, the World Wildlife Fund. And we exist specifically to work as a secular organization helping the major faiths through their own teachings, their own practices, their own land holdings, their investments, their schools, their media, their authority, to actually develop their own environmental projects and then to try and bring those into the wider family of environmental programs. Now when you say environmental programs, what sort of things do you mean? Well, it can be everything from their investment policies. For example, we've helped shift about a, a trillion dollars worth of religious investment funds into sustainable uh, um, forestry, sustainable agriculture, sustainable housing. It can be working on their foresters. About 5% of the world's commercial forests are owned by religions. And so we've helped develop a code for forest management that, that in a sense, what it does, Mark, is it ties together their actual core teachings and the fact that they have to make money from these forests. Yeah. Um, but also about 15% of the world's forests are sacred. The faiths don't own them, but they have a huge spiritual influence over them. We work with their schools. Over 50% of schools around the world are run by the religions or religions have a role yeah. in and they're the biggest non-governmental provider of education. And, and somebody was saying, so and in the in developing countries, that the, the, oh, the, the percentage, percentage increases. Out. If you take a country like Zambia, for example, 70% of all schools, 60% of all medical facilities are run by either the churches or the mosques or by the Hindu communities. So, um, I mean, the, the, the common strand, the reason I'm here today, the link is Alad Sticker mm. in, in the Netherlands. Um, tell me a bit about how you know Allard and 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 you know what what well, you're we sort fancy of the same woman. <laughs> it's, it's it's you know it's it's, it's got to be told, Mark. It's got to be told. I mean, the truth has to come out. Um, she is about two and a half thousand years old, um, but she is the. Um, we do actually have a, a a shared fascination in the Chinese goddess of compassion, Quan Yin who is an astonishing figure. She's what I call religiously promiscuous. She started out as a man and as a Buddhist, and she's now a woman and worshipped by Buddhists, by Taoists, by Christians uh, in China. And she is, I suppose, the embodiment of compassion. Her name means the one who looks with compassion upon the world. And I suppose for both Alad and myself, that captures why we care we try to look compassionately on the world. Our traditions, he coming from a, uh, a sort of a Rudolf Steiner almost type background and a scientific background, me coming from a Christian and spiritual background, both of us actually see the world as something that we have a responsibility for, that we need to be compassionate about. Yeah. And Kuan Yin is almost our patron saint. I, I mean, I met Alan for the first time earlier this year, and he was talking to me about his interest in Taoism, and mm. um, but he and he was also really the, about this this balance between economy and ecology. Mm. And I, I'm assuming, you know, your work from an environmental perspective really is a big. It covers that as well, but we're also actually engaged. I've just become a fellow of the Club of Rome, and we're now heading a project for the Club of Rome on that. That sounds terrible. That sounds terribly exciting. Actually. It is extremely it exciting. exciting. It's a whole project. Basically, the Club of Rome produced the first ever major report on sustainability and pointed out that we could not manage to live on this planet uh, with the with the, the growth rate that we were we were undertaking. This was yeah. the limits to growth in 1972. Yeah. That led to the Brundtland report in the 80s that yeah. really brought in the idea of sustainability. Yeah. But when they went to look at their reports, it's the 40th anniversary, they discovered there was nothing in any of the reports about values, about beliefs, none of it, it was all facts. In a sense, they almost accidentally created this world in which if you could give data, somehow that was going to persuade people that they should change. And we keep pointing out, nobody was ever converted by a pie chart. They're converted by stories. You and I, ever since we met, all we've done is tell stories. I don't know how much you weigh. I don't know how old you are, I don't know how many calories you ate for breakfast, I don't know how tall you are. Yeah. If we were a data-obsessed species, that's what we'd have talked about. We're not. We're a narrative species. Do you know, this is really interesting, because well, uh, Thomas, who I work with at the moment, we were talking the other week about big data and open data in international development, and he's very passionate about it. Oh, you know, we it's were, irrelevant. We were, yeah, we were arguing, because I was saying, you know, it's like, how, well, how do you, you know, uh, for me, it's like, how do you ensure that, the, the, the cities that are being built now aren't these terrible, disastrous slums in 20, 30, yeah. 30 years' yeah. time. And, you know, for me, that, that was it. But I, I see what you're saying. It, it's, 
there's there's something else as well. I, I'm thinking about the places, but you're thinking about... It's very simple. You talk to anybody who's ever had a racist uh, or homophobic relative, mm. and they there is nothing, there is no statistics that you can ever give to somebody like that that will make them change their mind. Mm. <laughs> but if their grandson or granddaughter or nephew or niece becomes engaged to or, or, or falls in love with somebody from that background, it changes completely the attitude of the older person. Yeah. It changes because there is a face, there is a story, there is a personality. Data is only of interest to statisticians. It is, I have no idea how big a hectare is. I have no idea what 350 whatever it is is in the climate change issue is about. Not a clue. Yeah. What I do know is that I've met people from islands in the South Pacific that have gone underground and their burial grounds where they buried their ancestors in the church ground are now gone and the bones of their ancestors washed away and they wept because they couldn't save them. Yeah. yeah. That's why I care. Yeah. Well, Martin, it's been great to meet you and I'm looking Likewise. forward to seeing more of the work that you and your team and your Thank network do. Thank you very do. much indeed, Thanks, Thanks for Thanks. a brilliant day. Oh, great. I've enjoyed <laughs> it too. Thanks.